Okay, so what you're saying is that we had a little bit of an og. It's so fing. Oh. So my vision here is I want a tapering river going from narrow to wider as it comes towards the, the fall of water. To do so, I'm gonna use this chunk of slab from the black rifle table, and I'm gonna cut my river on a taper. In theory, this, this should be simple. We're gonna start out, and I'm, I'm gonna kinda scale it based on look. So, um, track saw. Stop coughing. It is only tropical wood that infests your lungs for months. <laughs> Bruh. So I'm clamping down. This is an important part to making a river table. You don't want your pieces floating. Now this is a small table. If this was bigger, we'd caulk the bottom of the river here so we don't have any seepage underneath. Don't really care in this instance because um, I'm rushing through this so we can get it poured before the weekend because it takes five days to dry. So. We're all clamped down here. Now we've picked our epoxy pigments. Check these out. These are pretty slick. We're using black diamond of pigments. Black diamond of pigments. Black diamond pigments once again. We're gonna go with whatever the hell this is called. It's blue green. It's got a little swirl of metallic in it. And then I'm gonna get funky, brass monkey. We've got a little white fleck blue pearl something or other that we're gonna pour into the bottom so we get a nice mixture. So what we're gonna do here is pour the white down at the base there because the waterfall turns into mist. I wanna kinda get that effect. It's legitimately impossible with the way we're doing this, but I still wanna try. And then we're gonna pour Blue River and let it dump down. And pray to God it doesn't seep around, seep out of these molds. So, um, yeah, let's get to mixing some epoxy. Two liters of hardener. We're gonna pour six liters of clear first. No, of white first, then the blue on top. Let's go. I've never done this before. This could go terribly wrong. But let's get squirrely. Oh shit, it's pissing. We lost it. It busted. Okay, we've gotta stop it. It literally broke the entire thing off the front here. You need to hustle or switch me. I'm looking. Clamps maybe? We lost all the white. Oh, uh, there's a hole back here, it's pissing out. Where? Like in the middle of the floor. Everything is going perfectly to plan. I promise. Do not worry about what, this looks way worse than it is. <laughs> Did you, have you seen how many clamps are on this thing? Yeah, it's, in, it's incredible. Adapt on the fly, right? God damn. In the words of our forefathers, the only thing we can do now is keep pouring. Drinks, that is. Sam, whiskey. Damn it! Why hasn't anyone sent us whiskey? Let's see how much of this we got left. One. Three. We're going for four. Four! Ugh. Monday mornings. We poured the epoxy for this table Friday before we left, and I was gonna try to come in this weekend Hold on, let me get these lights. I was gonna try and come in this weekend and see if this thing 
me. Oh no. Oh no. Dude, it's really bad. Well, I'm, I'll be there in five. Okay, so what you're saying is that we had a little bit of an oh, fuck. It's so fucking. Oh, that is so much money on the floor. Dude, it's like. Every drop. That, that bandsaw is probably fucking glued to the floor. Well, it's probably not hard. Every drop poured out. Damn it! I wonder if the mold is sealed now that it's that it's poured up. Fuck! You fucker! And all we wanted to do was make it look cool with this plate. Ah! A thousand dollars of fucking resin on the floor. Well, it looks like. Perfect timing for epoxy mistakes video. Hello, my peoples. We're gonna attempt this again. Now this time we've made some better decisions as far as the mold goes. You can see we're not doing anything clear in the front. Sorry, no fun for you. We're also gonna be using, if you come around the corner to get us 90 degrees, uh, some corner clamps. Those things are awesome. And mold release for the first time ever. I got a thousand comments on my tips video that I should use mold release. So we're gonna use mold release. And I'm assuming it's just like Pam. Spray it on and all your problems go away. That's how Pam works, right? As much as it would hurt me, we're not gonna take on any Pam sponsorships anytime soon. I can support the diabetes, but I can't support the diabetes. So we should have a lot more stability on the front here. With this three quarter inch piece of MD, or excuse me, melamine, we're not gonna get that flex. What happened last time we think is like the pressure of the liquid bowed out and then a crack or something, like we couldn't really find a real answer. The levy broke. But the levy broke. By the way, one of the greatest songs ever and the greatest drum intro in music history. If you want to argue with me, let's hear it down below. But that's mine. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, shut up. So I say it all the time, kids, crack kills, especially in epoxy projects or the drug. But with that, what's happened here is we had too much heat in the drying process. We had fans going, the thermometer said it was like, I don't know, 68 degrees. It's, it supposedly goes up to 77. I also think what happened was we have too much volume uh, centralized in this corner and then that heat just happened to crack from here out. We don't actually know but I'm gonna bust this thing open and see if I can fix it. Going great. Oh, Mold release my ass, motherfuckers. Wow, that was so much more efficient than what I was doing. So, what the? It's all in all not that bad. It's so much better than I thought it would be. I was expecting just extreme explosion the whole way down. How the hell am I gonna save this? Too much heat here, it shrunk. Okay, I got an idea. What I'm thinking is if I can take the rest of the mold off and the bottom doesn't fall out, then what we'll do is I'll just still carve it. And I'll just work around the carbs. I was thinking the cracks might be stuck to each other. Cause like that whole thing is moving off now. Hmm, brain, work, hard. The comments I'm gonna get, I know this, and just refrain. 
I can't Keller match because of the swirling pattern. You see how this swirls? Thermal heat from the inside creates the swirl inside that blue. I can't replicate that if I just fill the cracks with a similar color blue. You'll still be able to see them. So what I'm trying to do is develop something that allows me to just be a little bit more creative and keep them somehow. So I think what I'm gonna be able to do is we'll just pop off this, this, this chunk here. I'll clean up the bottom and then we'll get some epoxy and just try to like clamp this sucker back together. And then I'm only dealing with like two cracks. Let's demold the rest. I like this. All right, let's just start taking this out of the mold. Goodness, what was I thinking? All right, so it's only a couple spots. <laughs> I think I have a plan. By putting some clamps on it, we're able to actually like bring these gaps a little bit together here. So I think what I'm gonna do is try to epoxy these two sides back together. My original plan for the table was to carve these front faces. So they're not gonna be flat anyway. So I may be able to hide these other seams with some carving. This one, I don't know what I'm gonna do quite yet, but I think I'm just gonna fill it and kind of just wing it from there. This is the definition, the literal definition of getting squirrely. This is a squirrely ass fix. Real quick while I'm getting this work done, I wanna send a huge thank you out to Woodcraft for sponsoring this build. If you guys want any of the materials we're using in this video, you can get them at Woodcraft. The tools too. Got a link down in the description, crush it. You probably got a local store near you you didn't even know about. Scoot on over, pick it up. Now, let's get back to the build. Well, I think we got it semi-fixed. We poured a, a bunch of epoxy in it, but like I said, you can still see a bunch of the, the poopiness. But anyway, I think I've got a way to make it still look pretty good, even though it's pretty much not what I wanted it to be. First thing we gotta do though is trim the legs and start to shape them. So, well, I won't rain my nose. Good for you. Oh, it's in my eye now. The thought Rub here nose. is if I can make this like puddly, I guess markers don't work on plastic. What kind of boost mobile sharpies are these? They're the ones that my boost mobile friend gave me. Kobe. Yeah, I can make that work. Instead of like looking like a goo, I'm wondering, should I make it look like it all poured out, like scooch this forward, and then instead I'll like, kind of like taper it out like this, and then I can carve that to go back into it, so it all kind of like matches. Mm -hmm. Like the river's continuing to flow. I'll just start carving this. That way I can see all the shape and feel and vibe and all that good stuff looks. So we're looking pretty cool. It's not really projecting the way I want. I'm hoping if I can bring up the sheen, like sand it past, like, I don't know, this is 80 grit or 100 grit. You can't really tell there's much movement in it. So I'm hoping if I sand it out a little more, you can tell. We're also gonna add a little bit of, we're gonna do some of that. Uh, we're gonna do some of that like ocean resin epoxy technique thing, I think add some bubbles, make this actually look like a waterfall. Yeah, that might help give it some movement. I, I want there to be movement. Everyone else does these, they're just flat and square. Damn it, we want, it's a movement. Come on down. 
So now that it's carved a little bit. I think we kind of like the puddle looking thing. These need to gradually taper out. And I think what I want to do is instead of have it puddling everywhere like it's goo, water would like, I think it would run a little more. So I might eliminate those backs. What I also might do is carve a void in it in both of these and like jut a rock up there. What do you think? Cut a hole in it? Get squirrely? Yes. All of these things. Who knows though, this thing's only been on my bench for what now, Sam? Two months? Two months. Why, why get it done when I could just continue to do more shit to it? Let's carve this first and give it a look though. So this experiment needs a leg on this side. My idea here is a rock. And because it's hard to uh, carry those, I'm going to make one out of crushed rocks, also called cement, and wood. This should be interesting. I'm stoked to show you guys this next technique. I don't know pretty much anyone that makes furniture that's using it these days. Highly secretive. It's called glue it and screw it. This one may piss off some of the trolls. So to build this rock, we're just gonna glue and screw this shelf together. That ain't the prettiest guy you ever seen. Don't count her out to the end. So we've got some, it's like a thin set product. I use it on the wall in my office, it came out pretty sweet. So we should be able to like just trowel it on and get it to look like a rock. That's my goal. The worst case, if it doesn't work, this may have cost 15 bucks. And we'll go a different direction. So I just uh, sanded down uh, the first coat of the concrete thing. Um, I originally thought I wanted it to be like rigid and, and like textury, but then I don't like it. So I think we're going to go with more of like a smooth rock that I kind of just like <laughs> slid that thing into. So to do that, I think I'm going to paste on, like paint on this layer instead of schmear and uh, kind of see how that goes. What's nice though is that you can you can work concrete kind of similar to you know most materials and you can sand it to smooth it up and whatnot. I want to do these like foam things here. Ironically, when we poured this, we poured all we poured white down here, and all that white flowed up to back here. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. What I want it to do is look like it's foaming and then come down and be foaming over the waterfall. So I've never done this before. I watched a couple YouTube videos. Um, I think I have a concept of how we can do it. We've got some friends on the back burner that we could potentially call though if this goes south. With that, um, this shit's about to get real squirrely. In worst case scenario, I can probably sand it off is where my, my mind's, which is the justification for not ruining this. So I'm gonna do a little tape dam, I think, and then we'll get to it. It's not white enough. Give me that squeezy white. Now this is where it comes into finesse. I gotta turn my heat gun on. But this is wrong. Did a couple things that I, I mean, I basically just winged it as, 
as I do. And then Sam and I called uh, our friend, the lovely uh, Jess Crow from Crow Creek Designs up in Alaska. I think it was like five o'clock in the morning and she answered because she's a gem. But she is an expert with the epoxy, kind of this art, uh, ocean art concept stuff. She, she's really, really, really good. Has her own products, she's so good. But anyway, she walked me through a little tutorial, got us a lot closer to the foaming look we're going for on this. So basically, I'm going to do this side over here and then into our waterfall and then let this, this is almost dry. I'll sand this off and then do this side again. Yay, always this. I don't think I've ever made this many mistakes on a project as I have on this. <laughs> Instead of using the regular high performance epoxy, we're gonna be using the tabletop epoxy. And if you need any more information on how to do anything or any of these techniques, go ahead and follow Jess because I'm not gonna answer them in here. Now, pan to epic B-roll. The river is dry and looking good. So now we gotta pour the waterfall part after we hopefully peel all this junk off. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this on before we pour the downs, I don't even, the waterfall. So uh, that if it puddles, it puddles down here and I can make it look like a double bubble. My favorite gum, I, I lied. It's actually wintergreen. But anyway, we're gonna pre-drill this and screw it into the waterfall. After all the epoxy dries and it's bonded together, I'll take the screws out and then we're gonna like just fill that with epoxy for like a domino. Shouldn't see it in here, but you will see a screw in this. So let's pre-drill. So I think if I can, if I pour up here and let it dribble down, it'll look like it's actually dribbled down. And then it'll puddle here and give us like two different kind of depths of this, uh, the bubbles that, that we kind of pre-bubbled down here. And I think it'd be sweet. It'll kind of, it'll look like it, you know, naturally kind of swept over. Spew resin time. Those wondering, I don't care about the drips. It's going to get everywhere. If you do, we could have put down plastic, but like, that'd be responsible. That and we'd probably be punching each other in the face, stepping on it, and I'd be fuming. Let us spread. So that's gonna be a wrap on this one. This thing kicked my ass for like a month and a half, two months, but I think it turned out really, really cool. Completely new concept to me. I've never done three quarters of the things that we did on this table. Let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comments section below. Should we be doing more? I don't know. Do you want more weird? And if you do want more weird, I got a video queued up for you right here. I'll see you on that weirdness.